You know what, honey? What? We have not had great luck with RV refrigerators. Now, you're right about that, but I do believe our luck is about to change. Stay with us. From beautiful Pensacola, Florida, I'm Ricky. And I'm Barbara. And together we're RV Underway. If you enjoy the RV lifestyle and love learning more about it, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Ring the bell to get notified when new videos are available. Leave us a comment. Share our videos. And if you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. You can become a member of the RVU crew by clicking the join button below. And finally, check out our merch store for all your RV Underway gear You'll find that button at the bottom of our YouTube channel homepage. Well, you're probably wondering, why are we back in Matilda? I'll tell you why. We are about to start talking RV refrigerators. We're going to talk about absorption refrigerators uh, and uh, nooses. Honey, I believe things are about to get technical, mm -hmm. and I don't do technical. So, I want to let you have it from here. Good luck, baby. Hey, luck ain't got nothing to do with it when you got mad skills like me, baby. <laughs> Our three RVs have all had absorption refrigerators, and if you're unfamiliar with an absorption refrigerator, they use a heat source, usually 120 volts AC or propane, and ammonia as a refrigerant. The process uses coils to draw heat from inside the fridge, exchanging it with outside ambient temperature air. Now the upside to an absorption refrigerator is that, apart from the door and perhaps an ice maker, there really are no moving parts. And it does use a little bit of 12 volt DC power, but that's for the igniter on the propane, the light inside, and the control panel up here. So that makes it ideal for boondocking. Now the downside of an absorption refrigerator is that it takes a long time to cool. And over time, the coils can get clogged and the ammonia can leak out, and the cooling process will slowly degrade until it doesn't cool at all, which is what's happened to ours. Plus, on travel days, you're running on propane, which can be dangerous. Running your propane refrigerator while traveling is not a good idea. If you do travel with your propane fridge on, you should turn it off along with all other propane appliances before pulling into gas stations or entering a tunnel. Two of our last three RVs both had absorption refrigerators that failed. Each time I noticed a yellowish-green staining around the coils, a clear sign of ammonia leakage. On our previous RV, I decided to do the install of a completely new cooling unit. The cost was well over $800 and the installation was not for the faint-hearted. Now, if you care to relive that episode with me, I'll put a link to it right up here. Go check out that video. And even after replacing the entire cooling unit, the performance was less than ideal. Now that brings us to our current RV. This absorption fridge is over 16 years old and it started failing about two months ago. Slowly the fridge stopped working, but the freezer was freezing. And then the freezer failed. And we were making daily trips to get ice and keep all our food in the coolers. So weighing our options, we knew we didn't want to buy and install an entirely new cooling unit. So we had our sights set on a residential fridge. We even went shopping for some. But because of the space needed for a residential fridge, we would have had to sacrifice the space here in the pantry. We were just about to pull the trigger on a residential fridge that would fit in this space barely when a friend told us all about his 12 volt refrigerator. So after some research, we reached out to our friends at RecPro. We've dropped a link in the description below. They're your premier source for aftermarket RV parts, furniture, appliances, and more. And if you use that link right down there, you'll save an additional 5% on your purchase. The pros at RecPro sent us this 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor unit that's only slightly larger than the absorption unit that we have inside the RV right now. Startup amperage on this is seven amps, and once it's cool, one amp to maintain. So no need for propane, no need for ammonia, better cooling performance, and only slight modifications to the space in the galley area. I'd say that's a win, 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 <laughs> and win. All right, I went and changed into something a little more comfortable. Got my work clothes on. We're gonna take this old unit out. First thing we need to do is secure the power. 120 volts AC at the breaker, 12 volts DC, pull the fuse. So let's get back here in the bedroom and take care of that. 
My breaker panel and fuse panel are behind this door located under the bed. The breaker for that old refrigerator is on the same circuit as the microwave. So we secure 120 volts AC to the old fridge by turning off that microwave breaker. And the fuse panel. For general appliances, it's fuse number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a 15 amp fuse. We're gonna pull that. In order to get the uh, old fridge out, there's four screws, two at the top and two at the bottom. To get to the top screws, this panel, the control panel, snaps off. And my screws are here and here. So let's go ahead and get the top screws out. The other two screws are right down here. So let's go ahead and get them out. What I want to do now is shift it a little bit and see if I can make it move. And then we'll go outside and disconnect everything from the back. So the top's coming. See if we can make the bottom move. There we go. We've got it pulled out about an inch. So I know all the screws, the mounting screws are out. What I need to do now is go around back, disconnect the LP gas, the 12 volts, the 120, and anything else like the thermostat wires or anything that may be attached back there in that compartment. And then we can go ahead and pull this out. Now, before we start disconnecting anything here, we've got to go ahead and turn off the propane, secure it over at the tank, and then bleed the line, and then disconnect this line. This is a hard copper line and I don't intend to keep it in this space. I'm gonna go ahead and find the manifold where it connects down at the bottom, and we're gonna take the copper loose from there. So right now what we're gonna do is go and secure the propane at the tank and bleed the line. So the best way to do that is come to the stove and turn on the burners and ignite them and let the gas burn out of the line, purge the line. Make certain that you turn all the burners off because you will eventually turn your propane back on at the tank. All right, since we're back here, we can go ahead and take the AC plug loose because the breaker is secured. And we'll go ahead and take this gas line off. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could buy a plug and put a plug in here, a flared plug, but I'm just gonna take this whole line out. All right, let's look and see what we got. We've taken loose the 120 volts. We've taken loose the gas line. We have 12 volts here. This goes to the thermostat and this goes to the ice maker, both of which are attached to the old fridge. So we don't need to disconnect those. So what we're gonna do is take these wires loose. These are 12 volt. They come to this block. We're gonna take them loose here, cut them, tape them off and tuck them back down the hole to get them out of this space so we can put our general appliance 15 amp fuse back in the fuse box. Okay, we got our 12 volts cut off and taped up. What we're gonna do is go ahead and push it back down in this opening which is at the back of the furnace underneath so if I ever need this 12 volt line again I can find it but the reason we don't need that 12 volts is because we're going to be running a dedicated line from the batteries with its own fuse block all right what I've done is I've brought a cooler in here which is only about four inches lower than the refrigerator so I can slide it out and lean it down and have it rest on that cooler while I look behind it and make sure we truly have everything disconnected. Nothing back there, so we're gonna go ahead and bring it out. 
little messy, but there it is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. Right, Thank bro. you. Ta da! So I came off the house batteries with 10 gauge wire, ran it through a 10 amp fuse block. The reason we use 10 amps, this draws 7 amps at startup and about an amp to keep it running once it's cool. So we're using a 10 amp, and I always like to keep a spare right there near the fuse block. Encased it in wire loom and ran it along the frame and brought it up right here and attached it. I also installed a ground strap from the refrigerator right to the chassis of the RV. A few other things I did in this compartment here is I used butyl tape or butyl putty and I closed up all the existing holes that were in this space. I shimmed the back wheels on the refrigerator. The front is adjustable. It has levelers, so I needed to bring the back up just a little bit and I used heavy duty L brackets to hold the refrigerator in place. I put that bolt completely through the floor of this compartment with a large washer and a nut on the other side so it's not going anywhere. That pretty much takes care of it back here, so we're going to button this up. We finished up the installation with some expanding foam completely around the refrigerator. The vent is open in the back, so the expanding foam acts as an insulator from the elements, but it also adds a whole lot of stability. Then we added some matching trim. I think it looks great. It does look great. Let's look inside. Look at all that space. We're loving this. A lot more space than we had before. We keep the freezer at about 32 degrees and the refrigerator at about 45 degrees, but we have found out that the farther back in the refrigerator cavity you go, it could drop two to three more degrees, so we don't put our canned sodas back there. We don't want them to ice up. But that is awesome. And you know the great thing is, we didn't have to modify this area at all. No cutting whatsoever. The old absorption fridge came out. The new 12 volt Everchill slid right in there. Plenty of space in the back. It's beautiful. And we saved our pantry. Now we're going to add our own personal touch. Well, from the beaches of Pensacola to the Rocky Mountains of Colorado Springs, it's been over a month since we installed the new fridge. We wanted to give it a good shakedown cruise, you know, test it good before giving you our opinion of this 12-volt Everchill fridge from RecPro. So, honey, what do you think? It is great. So much room. It just works wonderfully. I can eat ice cream now. Mm-hmm. I love it. I completely agree. This 12-volt RV fridge is a perfect choice for us. Thanks to our good friends at RecPro, your premier source for aftermarket RV parts, furniture, appliances, and more. For fast shipping and top-tier service, visit RecPro. Use the link below and you'll save 5% on your next purchase. If you have a question, leave us a comment or contact RecPro's friendly customer care team online using the link below. Hey, if you enjoy the RV lifestyle and love learning more about it, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Ring the bell to be notified whenever there's new content available. Leave us a comment. Share our videos. And if you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up. You can become a member of the RVU crew by clicking on the join button right over there. And do check out our merch store for all your RV underway gear. You'll find that button on our YouTube channel homepage. And until next time, Fair winds and following seas.